Hey everybody, what's happening? Sam is at Rear Come Action. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Uh, it's actually Tuesday, the 19th of January, so this will be uploaded either tonight or tomorrow morning for Wednesday, January the 20th. What's been going on? Well, I did a brew, I actually did a double brew last weekend. Um, did the Rudy Tootie American Pale Ale, which is this lovely gem here. Um, and fermentation is done. I'm going to take a gravity reading. And depending on where we're at, I may uh, cold crash or may probably just give it another day of acid rest and sort of let the yeast sort of finish themselves off. Also did uh, a Centennial IPA, which was, like I said in my last video, very, very loosely based on the founder's Centennial IPA recipe. Um, so before I get to taking some gravity readings and getting into the beer related stuff, I want to thank you guys very much for the comments. I've got some questions here from some of the subscribers and I apologize for not replying to your comments right away. I mean, it's funny. I mean, a lot of guys are like this. I mean, you got your YouTube link to your phone or your computer or whatever and you're at work, your phone goes off. You're like, oh, I want to subscribe. Then you get busy and you forget. So my apologies. But I'm going to make a point of, uh, of addressing some of those questions now. Um, let's just see here. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Um, so, Doug, 19752533 commented on a video I did a while ago called Racking Beer Without an Auto Siphon. And his question was, how many beers did you have before making this video? And the question, the answer is lots. <laughs> had quite a few, had quite a few, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and then on my last video, Matthew Harris commented, looks like you had a ball. My son wants to know what type of dog that is. And Spencer is a Springer Spaniel. We've had Spencer for about four and a half, five years. My brew dog, he's awesome. He's uh, he's a pretty good lad. Pretty good lad indeed. Um, and then Strat Beer asked, um, Sam, where do you get those elements for my brew pot? And while Strat, what they are, you go to like Canadian Tire or a Home Depot, and get like a $16 Betty Crocker kettle. In there is like a 1500 watt element. Um, and it's a coil element, but the thing you got to watch out with these elements is that they're not an ultra low watt element, like they're on, boom. So I have some issues with scorching. That's just me. I've actually got the boil pot here soaking. I'll show you. I've got the boil pot here soaking in some PBW and OxyClean. It's been soaking for the past few days and that's what you run into. Um, and I've been slowly scraping it off. So those black rings around there, I mean, that's not, that's just scorching of the trub. So. Gash Slug has got a really great video on how to take those elements out and incorporate them into your brew pot. So head on, head up over onto the YouTube, which you guys are already on, and subscribe to Gash's channel because he's got some really great info on there, but he's got a really cool video on how to incorporate <coughs> the 1500 watt kettle elements in your brew pot, which is what I did, and it works a treat. It works really, really good. Um, and I think that is it. Um, that's it in terms of questions. So hopefully I've answered all of them for you. Um, I want to encourage you guys and ladies, because I know I've got some ladies watching as well now, to uh, ask me some questions, and I'll do my very best to answer them for you in a timely manner. Um, you know, like I've always said, it's always family first, life first, and sometimes it gets in the way. Not life, that is, but brewing sometimes gets in the way. So you got to make just in sway and slightly adjust your priorities a little bit but with that cheers and happy homebrew wednesday everybody yeah we'll do definitely do more of this because these are actually kind of fun answering the questions um i'll see if i can uh, do some screen captures of the comments and whatnot and dump them into the video but not this time this time we just use the old fan for now so what we're going to do now we're going to take a gravity reading of the rudy tootie american pale ale um this was done with uh, Calypso, Citra, and Chinook, I think. 
I'll have to go back and double check the recipe. Um, those of you guys who want the recipe, send me a note or post a comment and I will gladly share it with you. I'll put it up on beersmith.com. You guys can download it and be good. Um, and I was starting gravity on this was 1048, basically about 23 liters. I wasn't sure if this was going to hold off in the, um, give me a blow off in the old, uh, in the, ferm in the uh, fermenter there, but we did okay. We did okay. So what I've got now, um, move the beer out of the way, got the hydrometer and my turkey roaster, turkey baster of doom, all sanitized, ready to rock and roll. I'm going to uh, take the fermentation lock off, pull off a sample, take a gravity reading, have a little tasty poo, and see how things go. So without further ado, let's get to crack a lacken. We'll be back in a bit. So she's finished quite dry. Looks like she's finished quite dry, ladies and gentlemen. Quite dry indeed. Got a spray, put that back in there. Alrighty. Let's just see how we're shaping up. Holy, it's funny, you know, I, I added yeast nutrient to this um, and uh, fermented with uh, USO5. And we're sitting about uh, 1.004. That do its thing. Uh, come on, you fucker. Come on, you son of a gun. Yeah, I'm gonna call that 1.004. So that is finished very dry. It's good. But she's gonna need some time to, I think, mellow. So, cloudy as heck, but that's okay. There's a that's actually really neat. There's a, an interesting like melon presence, <clears throat> and I can only assume that's from the calypso um, because I use and positive I used Chinook as bittering, and then it finishes off with a really slight grapefruity, almost like grapefruit pith note. Um, on the back end. But oh, we're not going to cold crash it yet, I don't think. I think we're going to give it another day or two. So without further ado, we'll take this off. And we will, actually, no, we'll leave that in. That's fine. That's been clean and sanitized. And we'll put that back in the uh, fermenter over there. But yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be interesting. That's good. I'm interested to see what the ABV is on that, and I'll post a little note down below in terms of what that's gonna be. But it's gonna be a really good summer beer. It's light enough that you can get, and it's there's enough citrus and fruitiness in there that it's the missus might even like it. So we won't tell her about this. But yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. This is a style of beer that I've been really trying to, I've been playing around with a lot and and find a beer that I enjoy and the American Pale Ale. I mean, it's so easy to do just a straight 
whack load of like two row malt or standard base malt and then do a bunch of late hop additions but I want to put my own little spin on it and find something that I like and works well for me. So that's why I've been using more or less my basic pale ale recipe and adding different hops to it and just sort of trying to tweak it a little bit. And I'm not, I'm not going to say I nailed it because far from it because the beer is still very, very young. But, mm. pardon me, I'm very happy with how, that, with how that tastes so far. Huh. Wow. So let's get that back into the fermentation chamber. And then we'll take a sample of the Centennial IPA and just see how that's progressing. It's not done. Uh, but friggin' hell. Ah, it scared the hell out of me. You guys dropped off the stupid Chinese mouse. Oh, scared the hell out of me. I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> we're going to uh, put this back in the fermentation chamber. And we're gonna take a look at the centennial. We'll pull a sample off of that and we will uh, and we'll see how that's shaping up. All right, we're back in a bit, boys. Cheers. Oh you bugger. <coughs> Make this quick. Can sanitized hydrometer and turkey baster of doom. Well, this one, I'm excited about this beer. Um, you guys who watched my video last week will see the brew day went super, super smooth, apart from final volumes. Um, 19 and a half liters was shooting for 20. You know, final volume was off. You know, it that happens and honestly I haven't had the time to delve into my errors I'm not entirely sure what the issue was but they say you live you learn we'll leave that at that snap the lid down on that gem yeah Crowson's fallen and it was it's again fermented with USO5 I still have a dry hop to do on that and we're going to let that set up and see. I mean, I'd probably say that's fermented out as well. Like, that's just nuts. Again, USO5 with yeast nutrient. We're going to call that... We're going to call that 1004, 1005. We'll call that 1005, actually. Holy snap. Jesus. I started out at 1062. It's gonna be a big beer. <laughs> where'd my where'd my glass go? Ooh. Let's get the glass. Let's do a sample it properly. That did that did taste good though. There it is. All rinsed out. All rinsed out. Now the thing is, is that these beers are, actually we're going to set that at 1, 2, 2, 4, where that focus is in, uh, bottom of the meniscus, we're going to say 10.06, and I'm hoping that's where it finishes. Now, the one thing I've never really been very good at doing is monitoring my ferment my fermentation they've been very good at doing it because you know I, I i tend to put them in the fermentation chamber and then i forget about them and i don't know if you guys are like me but you get busy and you forget and then it's like oh yeah it's wednesday i gotta do a video or tuesday i gotta sunday i gotta do a video check on the beers that's ah, just me either way what did I say? 10.06? Let me write that down before I forget it. Where's my choke? 1.006. Let's give her a shot. Color on that looks awesome. Which is so totally what I was going for color wise. That'll work out just fine. I still have a I still have a dry hop to do, um, and because fermentation is done, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to uh, lock up 
the the temperature in the fermentation chamber to 20 the DAS it'll rest let's see what we can uh, to do about that so let's just get this going here 18 to 20 Bunk. done heat's kicked on from up to 20 and uh, the American Pale I'm probably going to keg within the week I'm going up to 20 then I'm going to cold crash the American Pale there's a little bit of on that pail, there was a little bit of residual slight cattiness from the citrus, so I think it needs a little bit of time to just sort of like mellow. But I'm going to cold crash that gem. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to dry hop the Centennial IPA tonight, which I hadn't planned on doing, but at 10.06, it's going to be a whopper of a beer. I'll put down what um, the, uh, final, the FG is, the final gravity is. But, yeah, I mean, it's a really good... Tasting beer right now. I was only shooting for about 65, 70 IBUs, but I'd made some substitutions with my uh, grain bill. Uh, Carapils, I had, uh, yeah, the Crystal 120. Was it Crystal 120? The Crystal 60 was, I substituted Carabohemian into it. But I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm loving the color. The color is exactly what I wanted. There's a little bit of a set, that centennial punch right there out the nose. And it finishes clean with a nice little, that little residual centennial bitterness. Let's go to the freezer, take out some dry hops, warm those turds up. Introduce cold or frozen hops for a dry hop to minimize the chances of oxidization. That tip I got from the man, the myth, the legend in Norway, the great Tony Yates. Let's see what we got going on in the Friggy Poo. Food. Don't worry, boys. It's not for me. It's for the kidlets. What the hell is this? Well, that's my, uh, oh, yeah. This is what I want. Uh, excuse me. Double bagged. I picked this up from a Local supplier who were awesome. Columbus, and this is my Centennial. Now the cool thing is, is that with this recipe, I it's six ounces exactly. So um, six ounces total in the recipe, which is 28 grams times six. I'm not going to figure out the math right now because I just simply don't feel like it. <laughs> So, I know when I did the calculations that I don't have to weigh that out because that is exactly, exactly 67.85 grams of Centennial. I'm going to dry hop it for four days. I may do more. I'm going to check it after four days and see how it tastes. But for now, I'm just going to let those warm up. I'm going to add those into there and, yeah, let her go. But, I mean, I wasn't expecting that to be finished. But that is, oh, lovely. You've kind of gone out to room temperature now. This is the last of the Centennial. I'm going to start our dry hop now. Got the heat in the fermentation chamber bumped up to 20 degrees, as you guys saw earlier. And, oh, my God, I love Centennial. Love, oh, it smells so good. Oh, it's absolute heaven. All right. Let's get the crack a lock it. No. Let's try and keep this as quick and painless as we can. That's a whack load of hops. Oops. Try to minimize the splashage. Okay, there we are. Dunsky. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's going to be amaze balls. Snap that down. Make sure that's all good. Hey, look at that. Fermentation started again. <laughs> no, got to love equalization. 
Okay, that's going to go for another couple of days. That's the Rudy 2D Pale Ale. That's going to go for four. Bump the uh, temperature up to 20. It's going to equalize out now. It's been my homebrew Wednesday. I want to thank you so very much for stopping in and watching the videos. Your comments. Please give me some questions. Would love to hear more. want to answer more. Um, it's actually fun doing a bit of a Q&A at the beginning. I'd like to maybe do that more often. Um, if I don't get a chance to respond to your comments quickly enough, this is what I will do. Yeah. Please be sure to like, subscribe, thumb up the video, and share it. Get it out there for the world to see. Hit the little subscribe button down below. Hit the like button. Thumb it up. Share it for everybody. This is Sammy the Thrifty Brewer saying, if you're going to do something, do it with the homebrew. And by all means, keep calm and brew on. Take care, everybody. Cheers. And thanks so much for watching. Take care. All the best. Please be safe. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Cheers, you guys. Thanks again. All the best. Cheers.